Hey, so they decided to move from zero. From zero, from zero to thousands of Norwegian krona. How? Why? What happened? Like, this question keeps spinning in my head. Like, what happened? What exactly did international students do? But welcome back to this youtube channel if you are new here my name is samira and i'm a graduate student in norway today i'm asking this question can international students survive in norway or can the incoming international students survive in norway let's get right into the video a few moments later unlike most countries norway offered a free tuition for international students where you can study in Norway for free and you just have to take care of your accommodation and your daily expenses you didn't have to pay any fees you just had to pay a semester fee which is like 560 krona a semester in Ghana cities it will be like almost 600 cities for the whole semester so it wasn't actually fees it was um they called it semester contribution it wasn't fees so Basically, nowhere was a free tuition country. You you come and then you study for free. You go back to wherever you came from or you move to a different place or whatever it may be. But recently, they've decided to introduce school fees. What? And the school fees they introduced is way up in people's head. Like, what's going on? What's going on? How are you? The country itself is already expensive. How are people going to survive? So this question has been on so many minds and it's like we are even though we are thinking about ourselves, we are also thinking about the incoming students. Can they really survive in Norway? So today I just want to break down certain things and we'll, at the end of the video we'll find out if it's possible to survive in Norway or not. After the announcement of the introduction of school fees for international students, most especially students from um, Africa, Asia, um, America and the other parts of the continent, which is not part of the European Union or part of the EA, EEA or Switzerland. You are supposed to pay fees and these fees they introduce is i won't say outrageous but it's expensive you're already living in an expensive country and you're asked to pay fees and it's a whole lot now that they've introduced tuition fees you have to pay your fees and also deposit money into the school's account and the money you have to deposit into the school's account has increased and it's now 137,000 Norwegian krona, which is approximately around 14k euros. What? You have to deposit that amount into the school's account and also make sure you pay your first year's fees in, in full before you are giving the visa to come to Norway. Damn! For instance, my program now is around 125,000 krona per year. So that 125,000 krona, you have to make sure you've paid the 125,000 krona and then you've also deposited money into the school's account to prove that you can take care of yourself. That money will be given back to you when you arrive in Norway and you create your own Norwegian bank account and all that. But the school fees won't come back to you. That's like for the school, so you don't get the money back. So now, students are really wondering like, if you are an incoming international student, how are you even going to afford to deposit that amount into the school's bank account and also pay your fees such huge amount? People are paying up to 335,000 Norwegian krona, which is so expensive than in other countries. And then you can compare school fees with UK and Canada and then you realize this is kind of expensive. You're already living in an expensive country everything is expensive here and you are going to pay like this huge amount of money as tuition fees and all that and the funny thing there are no no like scholarships that would help you or that will help will sponsor your education so everything is solely you you don't have any kind of support if you are coming know that that's the cost on your head so if you want to come that's like I don't know if you want to come that's on you but it's a lot of money for me i think it's a lot of money but i'm not discouraging you from coming to know you. i'm just showing telling you about the realities i'm not 
discouraging anyone you can apply if you have any questions on applying to schools in Norway feel free to contact me and I will help you out but this money is kind of like too much I, I don't have the money to help anyone you can do it but I'm just saying maybe no. you need a school's link or maybe you just need advice on how to apply I'm here to help you this video is just to show you the reality and then you decide for yourself what you want to be if you want to try other countries or if you want to come to know where to study that's on you so i'm not discouraging anyone from applying to schools in norway so i made a long list of how the minimum wage in norway is student jobs and everything which we'll discuss in other videos but i just want to give you a breakdown of whether you can survive away or not you decide on your own you decide this by yourself so let's let's break down the expenses in norway so as the norwegian law allows international students is supposed to work um 20 hours in a week which is like 80 hours in a month and the minimum wage is around 180 krona or 175 krona i don't know exactly but most students earn between 180 and 190 krona so we are going to use the least amount people earn to calculate if you'll be able to stay in Norway or you'll be able to afford this country so let's say you are paid 180 an hour right and then the 180 you are you work 80 hours in the month so 180 times 180 times the 80 we are looking at somewhere around 14,400 Norwegian krona so if you are making 14,400 Norwegian krona in a month, you have to spend like 4,300 on rent, which sometimes comes like inclusive with your electricity bills. So you don't have to pay for electricity and water bill is free in Norway, so we don't pay for that. So you pay 4,300 for your rent. Let's say you, you live in zones, no way their transport system is built in, I think zone, so if you live in zone one and you are going to zone two always you have to buy tickets for zone one and zone two so if you are maybe you are living in us which is a different zone and then you are working in oslo meaning you are moving from one zone to the next zone you pay around thousand nine hundred two thousand krona for your tickets depending on whether you are um above certain age limit so you are paying like thousand krona which is like so that plus rent is like 5,300 krona a month. And then let's say you spent, you set thousand aside for your feeding. So that's like in total 6,300 krona. And then let's say that's it. You are not spending on anything else. Just your ticket, your feeding and your rent. Those three things. If you are not buying any extra clothes, you are not doing anything extra. That's for the month. So you are spending like six thousand and before you even get that fourteen thousand they have they have to deduct tax from it and you can pay as much as 25 percent tax so you have like ten thousand eight hundred to spend and then you've already spent like six thousand three hundred on rent and feeding and your transport so let's say at the end of the month you'll be able to save around three thousand five hundred krona to four thousand krona so you are saying you have that money set as like if you are not doing anything extra i'm not talking about if you want to buy clothes if you want to buy other things so this is just you taking out your rent your feeding and your transport from it if you are not paying transport yeah that's good for you so after you've taken all this out in december to january you can work for more than 20 i really is like the one month you can work for more than 20 hours so then you can earn like extra cash let's say you are working 40 hours in a week which is like 160 hours in a week so times then maybe the 180 you are earning and then you get more money like 21,000 in 21,000 in a month which is enough so after tax you make like you can get money during those months and then in the summer time too you can make up to um the same you can work more than 20 hours so you can make enough money but the thing is 
after my calculation in total let's say you are saving around 112,000 in the year provided you are adding like your summer jobs your december jobs and then your your monthly savings during the what's it called the semester you are adding all those things you are making up to 112,000 Norwegian kroner and with the 112,000 mind you you are not even going to send a penny let's say you've not sent a penny home you've not given your little brother money to buy phone or to buy anything this is just you spending on just rent your feeding and then your transport nothing extra you'll be able to save up to this amount of money that's the 112,000 Norwegian kroner and this 112,000 Norwegian your fees alone is 120 the least amount you are paying for your fees is 120,000 it's not even enough for your fees so if you have like an extra job during the summer during the summer and all that maybe you can end enough money there to cover up your fees but then you don't get to leave i don't know but meaning you, you are not spending on books you are not spending on anything else you are just going to solely based on downloading pds and all that so you wouldn't buy any book up. so that's the amount of money you can earn the amount of money you can save and if it pays your fees so after it pays your fees accommodation and all that and you realize oh i'll be fine in saving money to take care of my accommodation take care of my everything and then pay my fees at the end of the year then it's okay welcome to know because it's a very nice country to be in the weather is always there but it's a very nice country to be in if you love hiking and all that you would love to be in Norway honestly I love I love being in Norway because even though I'm not an outdoor person that much I always feel happy when I go out because people are smiling and all that so it's a country to it's a nice country to be in however even though Norway has introduced school fees there are exceptions to these rules and these include like if you have a permanent resident residency in Norway, if you are seeking protection from maybe your country or maybe a refugee here, there is an exception, you don't have to pay fees. If you are married to a Norwegian, you don't have to pay fees. If you have like family members who is like an EU or EEA living in Norway, you don't have to pay fees citizens from the uk don't pay fees in norway family if you are here on family immigration you don't have to pay fees if you you've already had like a full-time work in norway you don't have to pay fees. so there are exceptions to people who can pay fees but for some of us coming from africa with no eu citizenship or anything you are you have to pay fees you don't have an option than to pay fees so this video is to help you determine whether you would want to come to know it steady or not or you want to try other options thank you for watching the video don't forget to like share comment and subscribe all right bye